everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Mercenary Kings. Mercenary Kings has uh, an art style and a gameplay style, which is probably pretty clear to you just by looking at this kind of opening splash that we've got right here. This is a run-and-gun action game, uh, not entirely dissimilar to a game like Metal Slug, which is probably its closest relative, at least from the visual standpoint. Contra, Gunstar Heroes, stuff like that, only a little bit less kind of bullet helly than those games. It's a little bit more deliberate, at least in the hour or so that I've played so far. It starts out fairly slow, a little bit more um, deliberately paced than something like Contra where there's just bullets flying out of the screen or Gunstar Heroes where like aliens are shooting you out of the sky. Anyway, let's get started here. Before I get too far ahead of myself, I know some people hate looking at that splash uh, for like 20 minutes before you even start talking about the game. This is available or will be available uh, on Steam Early Access pretty soon. It is also available currently for pre-order uh, on the website for the developers via the Humble Store. And this is a game that actually has an interesting story. It got kickstarted last year. They asked for $75,000 last summer and got about $120,000, which is a, a Cinderella story, I suppose. Uh, although, obviously, there have been games that surpass their goal by more than that. And now, uh, you know, there's a playable build available, and it's pretty damn good, actually. If you are a fan of... Uh, games like this, uh, you will probably find yourself enjoying Mercenary Kings 2 a lot, I would have to guess. Now, one thing that's important to note here, uh, there is local multiplayer, and I am very pleased to say for the first time in what seems like a long time, that there is also online multiplayer. So, this is not one of those situations where it's like, okay, we made the game, and we know online multiplayer would be great, but it's gonna be hard to implement. Online multiplayer exists in the game, you can host games, even in this early access build, I've had random people just join my game. I don't know if this has already gone out to Kickstarter backers, or if it's just other, you know, quote-unquote press or developers that are in here. But anyway, local and online multiplayer. I don't know if you can mix the two, but anyway, we're gonna log in here. As you can see, I had about 45 minutes of play. Uh, so we're gonna wait for the controls menu to finish off as we get loaded here. And this is a, kind of our introductory screen. So we're playing as this dude, uh, we're gonna call him John Rambo because he kind of looks like John Rambo. I didn't mean to accidentally do like a rap song there. And this is kind of like our hub world, for lack of a better word. It's not like Contra or Metal Slug in the sense where you just kind of parachute into your level, uh, and then it starts, right? It, it, it's got this kind of like RPG mechanic, almost kind of reminds me of like the first town from Chasm. Uh, so, you know, you have this lady you can talk to, you can buy things from her, like, uh, you know, a ration or adrenaline shot, C4, hand grenades, etc, etc. There is also a crafting system in the game, and I'm, you know, wishy-washy when it comes to crafting systems. I find them kind of annoying sometimes, um, because it, it kind of adds an element to the game that I don't want to deal with. I just want to shoot things in my Contra games. I want to pick up a heavy machine gun and just blow up, you know, planes with zombies coming out of them, but, uh, in this game, you do have the opportunity to kind of increase your customization. You pick up crafting ingredients in the wild, uh, just from shooting enemies. Uh, so you can see I have, like, steel and wood here. Um, I, I have other stuff in my inventory as well. Uh, you can also, you know, customize your weapon and uh, your weapon sets as well. Uh, but basically, this is kind of like a Call of Duty style, or a, a gun craft, or a, um, what was that game? Loadout, I guess, where you can basically change, you know, anything on your gun, uh, from the stock down to the sight, magazine, uh, ammunition type, receiver barrel, etc., etc. But I'm just gonna roll with the pistol to start with. Uh, and we're gonna get started here, so you do almost have like a trench style or Iron Brigade style ability to choose your own mission. Now, as you can see, I am still on the first series of missions here. I am still a recruit. Uh, there are, what, like 10 ranks? Yeah, 10 ranks, and uh, this represents 45 minutes of play on the easiest missions. I haven't even completed the first series yet. So, you know, at least 450 minutes, I would suppose, of just like never uh, doing the same mission twice. Now, uh, these missions all have different types. I should say that, you know, 450 minutes of gameplay is substantial. I don't know if this other stuff is, uh, like, of, of the missions beyond Recruit or even in the game yet, or if Early Access only has access to some of them. But in any case, um, that, that definitely goes over and above something like a Contra, at least just from raw, new gameplay. Not that that's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing to start with. Anyway, let's get started here. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself and also getting myself bogged down in all these uh, interstitials or intangibles. Anyway, there's multiple kinds of missions here. Some of them are rescue missions, where you, like, rescue rescue hostages. Some of them are extermination missions where you basically have to kill like eight types of, or eight of one type of enemy, like Sniper for example. Um, there's rendezvous missions where you have to just find somebody in the level and then when you meet them the mission's over. Let's see if we have a new kind of mission. Gathering mission, I'm not really that into it because I think that has to do with crafting. Uh, extermination miss mission and gathering mission. Let's try the extermination mission, also named after uh, Spelunky. Well, not named after it, but you know, indicative or you know, reminiscent of Spelunky. The new biologist needs to hide it or needs to get a new hideout in the jungle, eliminate all enemies in the underground passage. Okay, so you can see um, the location is Jungle Path. The game does reuse environments, so you know, you'll have one mission which is like, kill eight snipers in this area, and then uh, you'll have another mission in the same area that's like, okay, now kill everyone. There is an $800 reward, assuming you don't die, and a 12 minute time limit, so let's do it. So we have uh, selected our mission here, now we talk to the hel helicopter pilot. 
and we can get started. So this is kind of a unique style for a game like this. This also kind of functions as the lobby for the game if you have somebody else joining your game. Uh, then you have the opportunity uh, to, you know, set up your mission there and talk to them a little bit. So, let's talk controls uh, quickly, which is a bad idea because uh, we have a time limit on this mission. We picked up some leather, there's a crafting ingredient for us. Uh, basically, B, I'm using the Xbox 360 controller here. I'm not sure if the PC controls are uh, in the game or if they work. Um, we, oh, reload here. That was really bad, actually. Um, X is shoot. Pretty standard. B is roll. Uh, a is jump, and uh, that is pretty much all you need to know. There's also an inventory that you can get to with the left bumper. So we have first aid, a transceiver, which we can use to talk to our general and uh, our gun. And what does right bumper do? Right bumper is our reload. And it has a kind of a Gears of War style or a Spy Party style active reload system where if you hit the right bumper again during the, uh, uh, the green bar, then your reload time actually happens much faster, and this can be very important. But it's also very addictive in potentially a bad way. Because I often find myself like trying to focus too much on that active reload without dodging, or instead of dodging, I guess, and it causes me some problems. So again, this is uh, you know, a gameplay that is probably pretty similar to games that you've played before in the past. Either you know something along the lines of a Contra, Metal Slug, Gunstar Heroes, I don't know, Ares Extinction Agenda. I play a lot of these kinds of games, and I like these games a lot. Uh, but there's not that many of them anymore. We're, our goal is to clear. What is our mission here? If I hit the back button, status, mission info. Eliminate the threat in the area. Okay, I can try that. I, I don't know if I have to kill everybody or just a, a small number of people, but or just a number of people in a certain area, I should say. Uh, but yes, um, I, I really like these kinds of games, and this one is a little bit different in a way that is probably going to titillate some people, and probably uh, others are not going to be the biggest fans of it, but I find it kind of a, a positive thing. Uh, at least reticently. This is uh, not your standard Contra style or Metal Slug where there's just enemies on the screen at all times. There is, at least in this the early game here, things start a little bit more uh, slow paced. And that's not to say that things are necessarily super easy. I die constantly. Uh, this is also obviously not a situation where you die once and or you get hit once and you're dead. Uh, you actually have hit points. Uh, so I guess, you know, I, objectively, it is probably a little bit easier than the opening levels of something like a Contra or a Metal Slug, but it's still not easy relative to, uh, you know, other games outside of the genre, so never fear that. But, uh, yeah, it's not as much like, okay, there's 5,000 aliens on the screen, get it, uh, take care of all of them, uh, and, you know, you'll be good to go, and you're just, like, constantly dodging and jumping over shots, etc., etc. Uh, it's more like, kind of like a Mega Man pace to it, where you deal with a couple of enemies on the screen at, at any given time, uh, and some of those enemies like this one, as you can see, are going to be a little bit uh, tougher for you to kill, and some of them are going to be uh, a little bit easier. Few enemies die in one hit, though. There we go. Uh, so, I don't know. It, it, there was a, a mission. Oh, eliminate the thread in the area 1 of 13. Maybe we only have to clear out all enemies under here. That's what I was thinking about. I will uh, admit, sometimes uh, there is a little bit of ambiguity with some of the mission objectives. Uh, this one in particular is, is probably the worst one that I've seen so far. I'm hoping yes. Okay, so there's 13 enemies down here. If we kill all them, we'll finish the mission. This seems like a fairly easy mission so far. Uh, but yeah, there's a little bit of ambiguity sometimes. Um, like this one is the worst, but you know, there'll be like, Rescue, uh, eight hostages! And then, you know, I, I mean, I guess that's pretty self-explanatory. But it's not like there's eight specific places where the hostages are. You kind of just have to run around. Uh, and, and look for them. I guess, you know, they're all in huts, but sometimes... It, it, I'll explain it when we can actually get into a hostage rescue mission, if we do one. Uh, because it, it, it was a little bit of a uh, irritant to me, shall we say. Now we do have some more dudes here. That's like 6 of 13 now. Uh, I'll also admit that some of the missions, especially when, you, you know, you're doing ones that are on the same level over and over, they can get a little bit repetitive, especially uh, I started with like three hostage missions in a row, uh, which was... Less than ideal, I would say. Let's wait for this lady to turn around. Uh, if you die, and this is something that's very important because you probably will die, uh, you lose... Oh, we have, like, tungsten there. That's a pretty important element. Uh, if you die, and you probably will die, you respawn at an infirmary. We actually just passed one. Uh, so, the, you know, the closest infirmary is the one that you are going to respawn at. And you also lose 250 gold or $250 out of your reward. So, you know, it's pretty sizable. It's about... Oh, Jesus. It's about a third of your reward in this situation. We already killed this lady, so I don't even know if this is going to benefit us here to kill her again. And we're also going to die here, in all likelihood. Oh, okay, just wait for her to turn around. We'll give it like six or seven seconds. And maybe now... Okay, good. She's up. Okay, now kill her. Kill her! This is actually very scary. Uh, does this count? Yes, nine of thirteen. Okay, so we only need to kill four more enemies. Actually, do I have a first aid? I do have first aid on me, so I should just use that for my inventory. I am guilty of uh, not using my inventory very much again because it's kind of like it's different than a game like Contra, where you 
kind of don't have any items except sometimes for bombs. Uh, that is 11 out of 13 now. Yes, so we'll just try to kill this lady and then one more and that'll do it. So yes, again, um, you could almost think of it more as a Mega Man style of combat. Got kind of a Mega Man filtered through a, a Contra or a Gunstar Heroes. And it's a lot of fun. The controls are good. That's the most important thing uh, for a game like this is that it controls well and it's responsive so that, you know, when you die or when you get hit even, uh, it doesn't feel like the game's fault. It feels like your fault instead. And definitely this is the kind of game that will hold you accountable for the mistakes that you make. And most of the times uh, they are really silly mistakes that lead to you getting hit. Okay, so we have one more enemy to kill down here. I am hoping that... Ah, well, should this not do it then? Okay, th this is what I mean by uh, not ambiguous, but kind of weird mission objectives. It was like, clear out the area, and then when I killed the 12th guy, I was like, okay, one more. But then I, there were two more guys down here, so it's like, could I go back to base without killing that last guy and just be like, hey, well, I wiped them all out. Well, okay, technically there's still one person down there, but I killed the 13 that you asked me for. Anyway, I thought it was a little unusual, shall we say. Um... I, I would prefer if there was almost like an enemy's remaining counter, and then it, it wasn't just like kill 13 enemies, it was more like, you know, when the count gets down to zero, you win, although I guess it's pretty similar. Alright, so now that we've completed that mission, why don't we uh, actually try to customize our weapon here, because I've just been using the standard weapon for the entirety of the, the time here. Uh, we can upgrade our Type IC to an IB for 150 bucks. We have like 2,200, so this seems like a smart idea, uh, and you know... Oh, we don't have enough fabric, unfortunately, to upgrade it again. Okay, so this is what I mean by uh, the crafting system. Some people are going to like it, I think some people are not going to like it. I generally seem to fall on the side of not really liking it. Uh, but I know that I am not necessarily in the majority when it comes to that. So, uh, let's look at what we have here and see what we want to upgrade. So, we don't even have a stock that we can upgrade. Can I upgrade, like, the type of my gun? From a, a pistol to a Sturm rifle? That is an assault rifle. Uh... Or we could upgrade it to a shotgun. Yeah, let, let's let's upgrade it to a shotgun. Uh, do you want to install the Denali receiver now? Yes. Okay, good. And then we'll check out if we can do something with our barrel to increase something. It increases our power, I think. Uh, the interface here, I think, could use a little bit of work with respect to making it uh, a little bit more clear. Like, making it a little bit more borderlandsy, one could say. With, like, the green arrows going up and the red arrows going down, uh, depending on how it affects our stats. I don't have enough money, I guess, to upgrade everything else, or I'm missing more materials. Alright, so now we have a shotgun. We can only shoot once before we reload, and it's kind of interesting to note that, uh, the, uh, oh, we can shoot twice before we reload. Oh, but it shoots two uh, shells at the same time. Okay, gotcha. Um, but it's interesting to note that the active time reload on the shotgun is much lower. Uh, do we have, we do not have access to the primary mission yet. Okay, let's do a torture cabin. This is a rescue mission. Rescue one hostage. Ironside was brought to a cabin where he'll be tortured. Save him before it's too late. Alright, let's do it. Uh, so the, the elephant in the room with respect to this video is that I am not playing online multiplayer right now, but I have played online multiplayer for a little bit, uh, with just some randoms who essentially joined my game, and it works totally fine. There's no latency that I've seen. Uh, the, there's no in-game VoIP. Instead, you have, like, kind of this chat wheel that you can see, so you can be like, hey man, bravo Zulu, or, uh, you know, don't sweat it. But, uh, you know, that's the only real complaint I have is that there's no VoIP. Uh, but by the same token... This isn't Dota, you know, it's not like you guys are going to be talking uh, strategy for the most part. Uh, you're just going to be like, hey, thanks a lot for giving me your item or something, or, you know, follow me, you big ding-dong, etc, etc. So, I'm not sure how I feel about this shotgun. The, the truth of the matter, oh, I fell in like the bramble brush there. Um, the fact of the matter is that uh, almost every enemy was dying in one hit anyway. Uh, so having a shotgun doesn't really seem like that big of a deal. What is up with this guy? Your backpack is full to drop an item, equip it, and press the shoot button while holding up. Okay. Um, well, let's shoot this thing first. There should be... Hey, I want to shoot this. There should be some uh, C4 in here. Uh, my backpack is not full, mister, so I can actually uh, just put this here and blow it up. I could have used that tutorial earlier, actually, uh, when I did this level. It took me uh, a little while. I guess I did it a little out of order, uh, but it took me a while to figure out... Uh, how to use items for my inventory. But anyway, we're rescuing one person on this mission. And so far, it's been pretty straightforward. Even though I've complained a little bit about um, kind of ambiguous or weird mission objectives, it hasn't been that big of a deal. Largely, it does boil down to kind of a Contra-style mission objective of just like, keep going left to right uh, until the mission tells you to stop, basically. Until, until you win. Sometimes that'll be after you rescue some people, and sometimes that'll be... Uh, after you find a person and rendezvous with them in the jungle, sometimes it'll be after you kill eight snipers, for example, etc., etc. Uh, I feel like the shotgun is not really 
all I needed to be at this point. Uh, like, I feel like it's okay, but the pistol was probably better. Again, enemies died in, like, one hit anyway. I guess during, against stronger enemies, uh, like that drill lady, this might be a, uh, a better choice for us. Let's, let's see if it works against this guy very well. Again, pretty Mega man -y type enemy here. It didn't even kill that guy in one hit. Let's just wait here for a second. Ah, uh, good, he did die. I actually did not know that he was going to. Oop. We can shoot down. It's uh, a little finicky, kind of like the down strike in Rogue Legacy. It's okay, stay low here. We can kill the sniper easily. That was very bad dodging on my part. Generally speaking, it seems like uh, at my current level of health, you probably have like, uh, you know, six or seven hits that you can take. At least at the level of health that I had before, uh, I, I got my armor upgrade. Six or seven hits seem to be uh, basically the norm. So that's going to irritate some people that are, I don't know, like Contra Purists. Uh, but, uh, I am not a Contra purist. But mostly I like these games because I am bad at finding my way places, and, uh, I, I appreciate this kind of core level Twitch gameplay without having to, you know, actually engage my awful navigation skills in something like a, a platformer or something like that. I mean, not like a Mario, obviously, because that makes it very easy to find out where you're going, but like a 3D platformer I have problems with, or, you know, something like a Grand Theft Auto or something like that. Instead, it's just like, move left to right, shoot dudes, and my brain is like, I can do that. Most of the time, anyway. Uh, so, here's these huts. Sometimes these contain people. The arrow over the hut is a little bit confusing. I used to think that it meant, like, there's a mission objective in there. Instead, it simply seems to mean, uh, that you can go inside of it. Which is kind of annoying, because you'll, you'll have, like, hostage missions, where you have to rescue eight hostages, for example, and they'll be in huts. Uh, but, you know, you'll see those arrows over the huts. But they don't disappear when you go inside of it, so you can go inside, check it out, and then... Uh, you know, leave and go to a different part of the level and then come back and be like, oh, this must be where the last hostage is. And you're like, nope, it's uh, an area that I've been to five times before. So, do we have more C4? We do not. We need to get more C4 to blow this up. This is probably where this dude is located, if I had to guess. This is where the biologist was, I think. Uh, and we only have another eight minutes, which might seem like a long time, but that probably means that the mission is getting pretty close to being over, honestly. Uh, and we can roll through these again, Mega Man style. I guess, you know, as much as I've talked about Gunstar Heroes and Contra, Mega Man is a, a bigger influence than uh, you might initially think just by looking at it. I mean, uh, some people might initially think that Mega Man is an enormous influence. Oh, really? There's no TNT here? Uh, but for me, it was like, this looks like Contra. Oh, wait, was that uh, C4 back there? Like, this looks exactly... Actually, it didn't look exactly like Contra. It looked exactly like Metal Slug. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, that influence is definitely here. But also, uh, from a design standpoint, Mega Man uh, plays a major role. Anyway... Uh, we have to make our way back through here. I much prefer extermination missions to uh, these kind of missions because, again, we find ourselves in a situation like this where it's not really solving a puzzle, but we do have to kind of go through a fetch quest here. I know there was a second TNT up and to the left. Um, do I want to go back and get that is the real question. Have we already been to the right here? No, we have not, for sure, because uh, I've never seen these. Oh, I've seen these snails before, but I've never seen them before on uh, this level. So let's just keep trying to kill these guys before they can shoot. This is where uh, the shotgun is actually providing me with some value. I believe there will be TNT in here. It's scattered pretty nicely. Oh, come on, now I'm gonna die. That's such bullshit, the TNT was right there! Oh, and I only lost $125 for that one. That was really poor play on my part, but anyway. Let's just roll through here, that was even worse, actually. Uh, we are pretty close to where we need to be. So, you know, you do have to be a little bit more deliberate. I've mentioned that probably like 30 or 40 times over the course of the uh, video so far, but it is not... I mean, in Contra, obviously, you have to be deliberate as well, because one shot kills you, but uh, it is not as frantic as something like Contra. At least uh, from my rose-colored glasses of what Contra was all about. Anyway, uh, there's our C4. This should allow us to finish off this mission, and then it's probably a convenient time uh, to end the episode as well. This is going to be an issue, because these guys do uh, not a ton of damage, but they're hard to hit from behind, obviously. I also wish that you could do like a jump mid-roll, I think that would uh, add a lot to the fluidity of the combat, but relatively minor uh, gripe to have at this point in time, I would say. Oh, she didn't die in one hit that time, she didn't die in two hits that time, you can get crit hits as well, uh, so that might explain uh, what our problem was there, let's blow that up, and take our weapon back here, I'm expecting this is going to be the end, this is not the end, we did get a gold coin though, this is where we found the, um, oh, this is where we found the uh, biologist like two missions ago, but now I have to do some exploration. And again, you know, your mileage may vary. Some people are going to like uh, kind of wandering around to try to figure out where the uh, objective is going to be, unless you can see where the objective is going to be just on the map here. I don't believe so, unless it's that thing up there in the top, in which case I'm an idiot, uh, and some people will prefer a more linear structure. 
Anyway, I, as much as I've been talking about, you know, it might seem like I'm trying to say that Mercenary Kings is a mixed bag. I do not feel that way. I feel like Mercenary Kings is actually totally awesome. My one gripe that I have uh, is the fact that... Oh, this is probably it right here. The one gripe that I have is the fact that Mercenary Kings is a little bit overpriced in my opinion. And that's not to say I don't think that this is worth $20, which is the asking price. Although you can pre-order at $15 on the game's website right now. Um, it's just to say that I don't think that's necessarily indicative of the climate for games like this. These games typically end up being in the $10 to $15 range. So, you know, we're talking about maybe 5 bucks. That's a minor gripe. $5 difference, I should say, between what I would expect it to be and what it actually is. Uh, but, you know, that's going to be important to some people. I know people will see, like, $20. Like, I, I'm going to balk at that a little bit. Uh, but, you know, I, I think this is definitely the kind of game you could play with your friends. I think this is the kind of game you could have some fun with uh, on your own as well. It looks beautiful. Music's good. Gameplay is totally solid. And the fact that it has both local and online multiplayer is actually a major selling point. Because a lot of games like this uh, sadly lack it. In fact, I can't think of the last run-and-gun game uh, in this style with online multiplayer. Uh... I actually can't. You'd almost have to go to, like, you'd have to compromise and, and mention something like a Castle Crashers or something like that. But anyway, um, this has been Mercenary Kings. There will be a link to the game's website to pre-order the game via the Humble Store. Steam Early Access page will be up eventually. And again, $15 to pre-order will be $20 when it actually comes out. As always, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, I will see you next time.